good evening uh, just confirm me that am i audible and whether the ppt is visible or not just make sure that everything is perfect let's wait for one minute and we'll start okay just make sure that everything is perfect everything is clear right did you revise non core data on core data and yesterday's topics and for today's class we are going to discuss about organization of genes and chromosomes okay did you revise the topic because today we are going to discuss mcqs related to that topic only okay we'll start okay and for today's class your first question will be a mutation in lac i gene results in so before that i want to explain about an operon concept do you know what is operon what is operon the operon is nothing but it is a group of genes group or cluster of genes which are under the control of a particular promoter okay it is simply a group of genes that are being under the control of certain promoter okay that is what an operon and my second question for you is see this operon will be happen in prokaryote or eukaryote or both of them this operon is takes place in prokaryote or eukaryote or both prokaryote and eukaryote tell me whether the operon will be takes place in a prokaryote or in eukaryote where this is going to happen if you know the answer just tell me the answer if you don't know just tell me i do know okay but don't uh, be quiet okay see generally this operon will be happen in the prokaryotic organisms okay bacteria okay and what is polycystronic and what is monocystronic in case of polycystronic one mrna will code for multiple proteins that is what a polycystronic this polycystronic is seen in prokaryote okay one mrna is enough to produce to code for a multiple protein okay as it is a simple organism it is polycystronic one mrna is sufficient to code for a multiple proteins but in case of higher organisms like human we are monocystronic in nature and what is monocystronic one mrna to code for a one protein okay that is what a difference between monocystronic and a polycystronic okay coming back to the lac operon it is operon will be generally happen only in the prokaryotic organ organisms and there are different types of operon will be there and uh, we are going to study majorly a lac operon and the tryptophan operon okay lac operon is said to be a okay uh, just tell me which operon is considered as a go operon and which operon is considered as a stop operon anybody know which is considered as a go operon and which is considered as a stop operon go operon is said to be as a lac operon or a tryptophan operon and stop operon is referred to as lac operon or tryptophan operon which operon is referred to as go and stop operon anybody know see when it comes to the go operon it is said uh, we are calling lac operon as a go operon and tryptophan operon as a stop operon why because 
see in case of a lac operon whenever there is a substrate here the substrate refers to a lactose okay whenever the lactose is present the operon will be turned on okay the operon will be turned on inside the bacteria okay that is why we are calling this lac operon as a go operon but in case of a tryptophan operon whenever the substrate that is a tryptophan is present the operon will be turned off that is why we are calling them as a stop operon this is what a difference between okay between this lac and tryptophan operon okay and you should know about the type of regulatory genes present in case of this operon concept see there are different uh, three types of uh, regulatory genes will be there constitutive genes inducible genes and repressible genes okay in case of constitutive genes it is a continuously expressed genes okay it will not stop that is what a constitutive expression for example in our body certain metabolic genes and ribosomes will be continuously pre continuously pr produced and in case of inducible genes it is what an example for uh, lac operon okay see what i have seen uh, what i have said with respect to this lac operon whenever the substrate is present in the medium the operon will be start okay whenever the inducer is present it will be induced this is why we are calling them as the inducible genes okay and repressible genes this is what here we can say a tryptophan operon as an example why because whenever the substrate is present whenever the tryptophan is present in the medium the operon will be stopped okay that is why it will be a repressible genes okay and coming back to the lac operon okay see this the lac operon which have a regulatory gene and cap site will be there and promoter region will be there operator will be there and structural genes will be there there are three different types of stru structural genes in case of lac operon lac z lac y and lac a okay lac z lac y and lac a lac z is code for an enzyme called the beta galactosidase enzyme and this uh, lac y is responsible for the permease this is the one which permit the lactose inside the organisms that is what a permease enzyme and lac lac a is is code for an enzyme called the trans acetylase enzyme the function of this trans acetylase is not well known but we know that this trans acetylase is responsible for the stability of the operon and as the name suggests it is going to add the acetyl group okay and this is what a three different structural genes inside the lac operon and see we are having a promoter region okay and we are having the operator region and we are having the structural genes where we can find the three types of genes lac z lac y and lac k and we are having the polycystonic mrna okay we know that polycystonic mrna is seen in case of prokaryotes because one mrna is sufficient to code for many proteins these are all the four things important for the lac operon okay and the, when it comes to the operator it is the integral part of the operon see it is the most important concept you should know that operon will be the integral part of the operator will be the integral part of the operon and the repressor will be the non integral part of the operon okay see in case of any mutation happens in the op, uh, operator the entire uh, lac operon will be unstabilized because it is an integral part of the operon whenever uh, whenever any mutation happens in the repressor another repressor will uh, another repressor will be replaced this particular mutator repressor and the function will occur normally because it is not an integral part of the operon okay and this is what an important thing and okay now answer for this question this is the basic idea of the lac operon just tell me if any mutation occurs in the lac i gene that is an inducer gene it is results in constitutive expression of lac operon genes inactivation of lac operon enhanced repression of the lac operon no effect on the lac operon see generally this i is nothing but an inducer 
this is a gene for a repressor protein where the repressor will bind here and p is for the promoter o is for the app operator okay and you know that uh, lac z lac y lac a and all structural genes they are code for the different enzymes and whenever the mutation occurs in the i region whenever the mutation occurs in this there will be a constitutive expression of the lac operon because the operator is never closed okay see whenever the inducer is mutated the operator will be will never close so in the op if the operator is not closed the lac operon will continuously be activated okay so uh inducer is always going to block the operator as this inducer is uh, uh, mutated this operator will never close and the operon will be continuously turned on so constitutive expression of lac operon genes will be happened okay any doubts with respect to this question see before that i want to you to note the structural structure of this lac operon how it looks like say this will be the regulatory gene and here we can see the cap site and here is the promoter region and here will be the operator region and here will be the lac z lac y and lac a okay regulatory gene is the area where we can find the rna polymerase will bind here in the regulatory gene just make a note of it in the regulatory gene rna polymerase will come and bind here okay in the cap site a cap molecule will be bind okay what is the purpose of this uh, cap molecule and the cyclic amp complex only because when when it attached to this uh, uh, cap and cap uh, cyclic C, uh, cyclic amp only then it will results in the efficient transcription okay and the promoter where we can find the rna polymerase will bind here and the operator where we can find the repressor will bind okay this repressor is the one going to bind with the operator whether the, uh, the operon will be turned on or turned off will be uh, decided by the binding of this repressor and we know this is the structural gene this is how the lac operon will be looking like now second question what happens to the lac operon when both lactose and glucose are present when both lactose and glucose are present whether the lac operon will be turned on or turned off what happens to the lac operon when both lactose and glucose are present in the medium see a glucose is a basic monosaccharide we know that and lactose will be a disaccharide and lactose will be uh, has to be break down into a galactose and the glucose only then the glucose will be taken by the bacteria if the glucose is already present in the medium what would the bacteria would prefer obviously this glucose will be taken by the bacteria they don't want to metabolize this lactose so obviously the lac operon has to be repressed now the repressor will be attached with the operator and the lac operon will be stopped okay this is what a concept now if the glucose uh, is absent if the glucose is absent and the lactose is absent whether the lac operon will be uh, turned on or turned off turned off why because lactose is not present lactose if the lactose is present if the lactose is present and the glucose is absent only then the lac operon will be start to occur okay now it is will it will be repressed we know that which a molecule binds to the lac operator to prevent the transcription 
which has to be bind to the operator to prevent the transcription. Obviously, the repressor will be the one has to bind with the operator. And if it binds to the operator, the, uh, the operator does not allow the RNA polymerase to move along to the structural gene. Okay, so obviously, this lack of repressor will be the answer. What is the effect of tryptophan on the tryptophan operon when it is present in the environment? Here we can we can say this tryptophan as a co-repressor, okay? Because it is the one if it is present in the medium, okay? Definitely the tryptophan operon will be turned off, okay? If it is present in the medium, the tryptophan operon will be turned off. That is why we are calling this tryptophan operon as a stop operon, okay? Good. And what how this tryptophan op operon will be looked like? Is here will be the promoter, and here will be the operator, and the leader sequence will be there. And leader sequence, it which will be considered as the regulatory area where we can find a different scenario. Okay. In the leader sequence, we have a different uh, portions and tryptophan E will be there and tryptophan D, tryptophan C, tryptophan B and tryptophan A. These are all the structural genes. And when uh, one and two paired with each other, we got a passing signal. When one and two paired with each other, then the signal will be passed. Okay, if two and three will be paired and we uh, will get the anti-termination signal. Okay, and if three and four will be paired, we get the termination signal. Okay, when three and four will be paired, it will be the termination signal. And if two and three are paired, we'll get the anti-termination signal. And if one and two are paired, we'll get the passing signal. The signal is very important. Okay, and uh, for this question, repression will be the answer because this tryptophan itself is acting as a co-repressor. When it binds to the operator, definitely it is going to stop the tryptophan operon. You know, which mechanism can a uh, transposons use to cause mutation in the host genome? What is the name of the mechanism can transposons use to cause mutation in the host genome? And that will be the insertional inactivation. Can anybody know what does mean by insertional inactivation? What is insertional in, in uh, inactivation? See, what is transposons? What is transposons? Transposons, we are calling them as what? Very good. Jump, jumping genes. This transposons, it is going to cause a good mutation or a uh, bad mutation. We can say mutation with a negative impact, which is which has the highest priority. Always it is bad. In some times they are good. For example, a color uh, color of grapes. We can say like that. Mostly it will cause a bad, a negative effect. Okay, when it comes to the mutation, we can't say it is always a good mutation. Okay, now, 
the, how many types of transposons will be there? How many types of transposons we can see here? There are two different types of transposons. We can say a DNA transposons and we can say the RNA transposons. And this DNA transposons, we are calling them as the class two transposons. In RNA, we are calling them as the class one transposons or we can also say that the retro transposons. Okay, and in uh, DNA transposons and RNA transposons is there. And uh, in eukaryotes, which transposons is very common? In eukaryotes, whether we can find the uh, DNA or RNA transposons. Very good. In eukaryotes, we are going to find majorly, um, generally we can find both the type of transposons, but RNA is very common. But we can uh, we can say both DNA and RNA transposons will be there, but uh, class 1, that is uh, RNA, retrose transposons will be very common in case of eukaryotes. But in prokaryotes, only class 2, that is DNA transposons is possible when it comes to the prokaryotes. And in uh, we are saying this uh, uh, class two transposons and class one transposons, and in class two we have a uh, two different types of DNA will be there. Okay, replicative DNA and non-replicative DNA. Okay, replicative DNA and non-replicative DNA. Replicative DNA and which is called as the copy and paste transposition, which is called as the copy and paste transposition. Replicative will be the copy and paste transposition. Very good. And in which DNA, whether it is a replicative DNA or non-replicative DNA, the total number of copies will increase. In which DNA, the total number of copies will increase. In replicative DNA, it is called as the copy and paste transposition. Here, the total number of copies will be increases. In non-replicative DNA, it is a cut and paste transposition. Here, no copies will be increased. Okay. Now, see, a transposons can disrupt the gene function. Okay. See, they are go. They, we are calling them as the jumping genes. Simply, some of the genes will jump into an another area and it is uh, attached with the and it is mingled with the other gene where it is not uh, where it is not needed. Okay, and it is inserted and it is coding for a protein and that is called as the insertional inactivation. Okay, this insertional inactivation, this insertion of some genes where it is not needed, that particular gene is leads to a mutation. Okay, this is what an insertional inactivation and which a level of chromatin organization involves the wrapping of DNA around the op histone octamers. Come on. Just tell me which level of chromatin organization involves a wrapping of DNA around the histone octamers. And what is the function of this histone protein?
acetylation it is the one going to wrap up the dna okay when it is attached when it attached with the dna it makes the dna into a condensed form okay what we are calling them as the chromatin okay and what is the charge of dna what is the charge of dna positively charged or negatively charged negatively charged why it is negatively charged why it is negative negative charged what is present to make the dna to be negative why it is negative very good because of the presence of phosphate group and what is the charge of histone protein what is the charge of histone protein positive charge why it is positive which amino acid make the histone protein positive very good because of the presence of lysine and arginine okay it makes the histone protein positive so both the charges are getting attracted to each other and histone protein makes the dna a most condensed form okay now and also uh, histone is the one going to wrap the dna and they are the one converting the dna into euchromatin as well as the heterochromatin and heterochromatin is the most condensed form euchromatin in the heterochromatin we can't find the transcriptional site so the uh, promoter will not bind to the initiation region so the transcription will not going to happen and the protein it is not going to synthesize in case of heterochromatin but in case of euchromatin the transcription uh, it is not in a condensed form in, in, instead of that it is in a relaxed form and we are where we can find the transcriptional site okay it is a free so that the promoter will bind in the insertion region and the protein synthesis will be continued right and now answer for this question c always which level of chromatin organization involves the wrapping of dna around the histone proteins that will be the secondary structure okay and what is nucleosomes see this secondary structure of chromatin involves the wrapping of dna around the histone octamer always the histone will be occur in the octameric form kindly make a note of it this is an important statement and when it is wrapping the wrapping the dna it is converting them to the nucleosomes nucleosome is considered as the lowest level of chromatin organization okay it is a lowest level of chromatin organization it is the one pack the dna in the stable coiled form okay which histone modification is associated with transcriptionally active chromatin and before that you should say what is known as the active chromatin what is active chromatin what will be the technical term active chromat chromatin very good and what will be the modification will be happened in case of active chromatin quick why are getting uh, so much of time for this question acetylation okay for the acetyl acetylation is the name of the modification post translation modification it is associated with the transcriptionally active chromatin that is u chromatin see this acetylation uh, acetylation of uh, histone tails this is the one acetylation it is neutralizes their positive charge okay by neutralizing these positive charge they are going to loosen the chromatin structure so what uh, makes the heterochromatin uh, to convert into the euchromatin means this modification what is that acetylation okay now then only the rna polymerase that is a promoter will associated with the initiator region then the transcription will be continue mrna will be synthesized 
okay now what is the function of the heterochromatin we know that heterochromatin will be the most condensed form and neochromatin will be the uh, loosened form and what is their function why it has to be exhibit in a condensed form and the loosened form You can easily eliminate the option, right? It is condensed and transcriptionally inactive. Okay. It is characterized by tightly packed nucleosomes. It makes the DNA in a stable form to maintain their from to maintain the chromosome structure and their stability. Okay. What is the primary role of heterochromatin in the nucleus? In the nucleus, what is their primary function? Facilitating transcription, DNA replication, chromosome segregation, repairing DNA damage. Quick. Facilitating transcription. See, just now we have said that it is a transcriptionally inactive. Okay, it is transcriptionally inactive. It its primary function is, as I said before, it has to maintain the structure and stability, and also it is involved in the chromosome segregation. Okay, chromosome segregation. It has no role in the DNA replication, no role in the transcription, no role in the repairing DNA damage. Okay. Which histone proteins? Kindly read the explanation also. Okay, it is this heterochromatin plays a crucial role in the cell division process. Okay, by helping to organize and compact uh, chromosomes, ensuring their proper alignment and distribution to their daughter cells. Because one cell has to be divided into two cells in the mitotic division, is it not? And the complete proper segregation between these two daughter cells will be happened only by the will be done only by this heterochromatin. Okay. So, home chromosome segregation will play an important role. Which histone modification is commonly associated with the heterochromatin formation? Or we can say the transcriptionally inactive chromatin. Which histone modification is required for heterochromatin formation? Okay, very good. Methylation will be the histone uh, modification associated with the heterochromatin formation. Okay, see methylation happens in the histone tails. This is the one leads to the chromatin will has to be condensed and the transcription will be repressed where it is inactive. Now, which of the following disease is associated with the heterochromatin abnormalities? Which disease is associated with the heterochromatin abnormalities? Maintaining a structure of chromosome and its stability is very important and that, that has to be done by the heterochromatin. If the heterochromatin is not functioned normally, what will be the disease will be uh, happen? Is it so? And that will be the red syndrome. Okay, it will be the neurodevelopmental disorder. This is the one caused by the mutation, and this mutation occurs in the MECP2 gene. Okay, this is the gene involved in the chromatin remodeling and the heterochromatin formation. If the mutation ha happens in this gene, means it results in the red syndrome, which results in the neuro neurodevelopmental disorder. Okay, 
now. What distinguishes constitutive heterochromatin from the facultative heterochromatin? Constitutive heterochromatin and the facultative heterochromatin. First option, constitutive heterochromatin is always transcriptionally inactive. Well, the facultative heterochromatin can become active under certain conditions. And constitutive heterochromatin is found near the centromeres and telomeres. Well, the facultative heterochromatin is dispersed throughout the genome. And third option is constitutive heterochromatin contains the repetitive DNA sequences. While the facultative heterochromatin contain unique gene sequences. Option D, constitutive heterochromatin is replicated during the S phase. And facultative heterochromatin is replicated during the EM phase. What will be the answer? Okay, see, very good. Constitutive heterochromatin is transcriptionally, is always transcriptionally inactive. Constitutive means continuous, okay, always. And heterochromatin means condensed form. Always it will be in a condensed form, which is transcriptionally inactive in all the, all the, at always. And by facultative uh, heterochromatin will be active under certain conditions. Okay, and this Constitutive heterochromatin is permanently condensed always. And the facultative chromatin can undergo a reversible changes in their structure. Sometimes it will be transcriptionally active and, and at many times it will be inactive. It is a reversible. Okay. And it constitutive will be a permanent. Which of the following is not a characteristic of euchromatin? Why some people are not answering? Everybody should answer even though it is right or not. Okay. See, it contains mostly a repetitive DNA sequences will be the a wrong statement when it comes to the euchromatin. We know that euchromatin will be the in the loose end form and we, where we can find the transcriptionally active sites will be there and promoter will bind to the initiation region and the mRNA synthesis will be continued and it is loosely packed we know that and it is enriched in the gene and regulatory elements only that we can call them as a transcriptionally active region and it contains an unique protein coding sequence rather than a repetitive DNA sequence this is the most important state difference between the heterochromatin and euchromatin okay now what is the primary role of euchromatin in the nucleus? For heterochromatin, the primary role will be there. Chromosome segregation inside the nucleus. And in euchromatin, what will be the primary role in the nucleus? Facilitating, uh, facilitating chromosome segregation, DNA repair, transcriptional regulation, chromatin condensation. Okay, and transcriptional regulation will be the correct answer. I hope I don't want to uh, explain much. And what is the difference between and what distinguishes this facultative heterochromatin from the constitutive heterochromatin? Again, the same question like the heterochromatin. Facultative euchromatin is permanently condensed while constitutive euchromatin can undergo a reversible changes in their structure and transcriptional activity. Facultative euchromatin is enriched in the repetitive DNA sequence, while the constitutive euchromatin contain, contains mostly protein coding regions. 
facultative euchromatin is found near the centromere and telomere while the constitutive euchromatin is dispersed throughout the genome facultative euchromatin is replicated during the m phase of the cell cycle while the constitutive euchromatin will be replicated during the s phase Okay, see the facultative euchromatin is permanently condensed. Okay, while the euchro constitutive euchromatin can undergo a reversible changes in their structure and the uh, transcriptional activity. This is what a difference between the facultative and constitutive euchromatin. See the facultative euchromatin will be transcriptionally active or inactive. Okay, based on their need, it will be transcriptionally active or inactive, whereas the uh, constitutive euchromatin will be continuously active. Okay. Which of the following disease is associated with the abnormalities in euchromatin structure or function? Fragile X syndrome, Angelman syndrome, prader willi syndrome, Williams syndrome. Hello, answer for this question. Which disease is associated with the abnormalities in euchromatin structure or function? And that will be the fragile X syndrome. Okay, fragile X syndrome will be the correct answer when it, uh, when it has a mutation in FMR1 gene. Okay, which leads to the abnormal methylation and heterochromatin formation in the promoter region of the gene. This results in the transcriptional silencing. And mainly, the mutation in this gene results in the fragile X chromosome. And what percentage of human genome is estimated to consist of unique DNA? It will be less than one percentage. Okay, while well, the human genome is largely composed of the repeated DNA element. Okay, and unique DNA encompasses the protein coding gene, regulatory gene, and other non-repetitive genes. Or every everything everything will be coming under unique DNA, and that will be comprises less than one percentage. And what is the primary function of unique DNA sequence in the genome? You have further more uh, seven questions. Be quick. And before that, I have to explain what are all the types of DNA sequence we can find in our body. See, uh, DNA sequences uh, can be categorized into two types. One is a unique DNA and a unique DNA. Or we can say the non-repetitive DNA and the repetitive DNA. In the unique DNA, we can categorize further to truly unique. 
okay it which will be a single copy of a gene and this will be the gene family where we can find the similar sequences and hemoglobin will be the example and in hemoglobin we can uh, we can call them as the globin gene family under that we have a cluster of related genes like hemoglobin and in hemoglobin we have two alpha and two beta and in case of embryo we can find two zeta and two epsilon these are all the types of unique dna particularly the gene family similar sequences can be seen and in repetitive dna we have uh, two different types of uh, repetitive dna one is a moderately repetitive and the highly repetitive dna in the moderately repetitive dna we can further categorize into two one is tandem repeat and another one is in interspersed repeat in the interspersed repeat we can find the sign and the line okay s i n e and l i n e sign and line in highly repetitive dna we can find and satellite satellite dna and mini satellite dna and micro satellite dna and uh, what is your duty is how many base pairs can be seen in all these type of dna is very very important see in case of moderately repetitive dna we can find uh, approximately 150 to 300 genes 300 base pairs will be seen in case of moderately repetitive dna dna and and in case of highly repetitive dna we can find less than 10 base pairs less than 10 base pairs of the uh, uh, dna uh, uh, base pairs will be seen in case of highly repetitive dna and this highly repetitive will make up the 11% of the human genome okay are you clear okay and what is the answer for this question see this uh, flow chart is very important kindly make a note of it and the primary function of this unique dna will be the regulation of gene expression okay which of the following disorders is caused by the mutation in unique dna sequences if in case any a mutation happens in the unique sequence of dna unique sequence of dna what will be the disorder will be resulted and the disease will be the duchenne muscular dystrophy and what is mean by prader willi syndrome do anybody remember what is mean by prader willi syndrome what is it and which chromosomal aberration which causes this prader willi syndrome which chromosomal aberration whether it is a deletion or duplication or inversion or translocation which chromosomal aberration which causes the prader willi syndrome we have a 46 chromosome and in 15th chromosome particularly the long arm at the 13th region where we can find the deletion this condition results in the prader willi syndrome clear kindly make a note of it we have a 46 chromosome and what is the type of chromosomal aberration deletion in the 15th chromosome in the region of the short uh, long arm on the 13th region okay this is why the condition results in the prader willi syndrome and when it comes to the mutation in unique dna sequence it results in the muscular dystrophy and which of the following is not a type of repetitive dna sequence just now i have explained the type of dna sequence if you listen carefully uh, you can easily answer this question not a type of repetitive dna Okay. 
What about the others? Protein coding genes are not considered as the repetitive DNA sequence. Okay, see this repetitive DNA sequence includes a satellite DNA, uh, ALU uh, elements, a telomeric repeats, and other repetitive genes. Okay, which repetitive DNA sequence is commonly found in the centromeric region of the chromosome? It is found in the centromeric region of the chromosome. Centromeric region of the chromosome. Which repetitive sequence will be seen in the centromeric region? Okay, that will be the satellite DNA. It is the one find, found in the centromeric, particularly the heterochromatic regions of the chromosomes. Again, it also involved in the chromosome structure and the stability. And which repetitive DNA sequence is involved in protecting chromosome ends from degradation and fusion? The most important question. Okay, telomeric repeats because it is the one maintaining the length of the DNA. Okay, by uh, uh, the DNA, it is, it is frequently undergoes a degradation process. There comes the telomerase enzyme, which is adding the sequence called this at the end of the chromosomes to maintain its chromosome stability. Right, and which of the following technique is commonly used to visualize the organization of genes and chromosomes? Which a technique is commonly used to, to visualize the organization of genes and chromosomes? Quick, quick, quick. Fluorescence in situ hybridization. Okay, fish. It is the one, a technique, a cytogenic technique to visualize the organization and location of specific DNA sequence on a chromosomes. Okay. So uh, read about this technique. It is very important. Their working phenomenon is important. And which of the following accurately describes, one minute, describes the organization of gene and chromosome in the human genome? Accurately describes the organization of genes and chromosome in human genome. Each chromosome contains one gene. Genes are organized linearly along the chromosome with non-coding regions interspersed. All genes are clustered together in the genome. Chromosomes are composed entirely of a repetitive DNA sequence. How? Oh, each genes contains only one, each chromosome contains only one gene. Huh? Genes are organized linearly along the chromosome with non-coding regions interspersed. This is what a perfect definition for this organization of genes and chromosome in the human gene. Finally, which of the following? Okay, uh, the same question. Okay, fine. That's all for today. For tomorrow, what is the topic? Cell division. Cell division is a topic you have to read for tomorrow and tomorrow's test. Everybody clear? Do you have any doubts? You can wait or else you can leave the class. And for tomorrow, uh, you have to read and count the cell division, cell cycle and cell division. Okay, fine. Thank you. And if you have any clarification, you can post it in the group at any time. Okay, fine. Thank you.